What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to another epic video. This time we're going to be looking at this bad boy right here. It's the brand new laptop from Apple with the M1 chip. So this is a maxed out version. We're going to go through, build out the system that I'm using. I'm going to show you which version of DaVinci Resolve you have to install. We're going to grab a 12K raw clip, bring it into Resolve timeline, and then do a little grade, throw some OFX on it, and then see how it performs. Then I'm going to wrap it up by giving you some real world advice that's going to unleash the full potential of this beast right here. And for those that want to level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go-to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look. How to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much much more link is in the description if you're enjoying the content you know what to do smash that like button it will mean the world to me subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness do not forget to follow me on instagram let's roll the intro All right, so let's start off by building the Mac that I'm using here. So I'm gonna go to apple.com, click on Mac, and then I went with the Mac Pro, MacBook Pro instead of the MacBook Air. So let's go ahead, click on that, buy. And uh, basically it's just maxed out, but you gotta be careful. So there's two different versions here, but then if you go down, you can also get the Intel version. So you don't wanna click on those and it's uh, you don't wanna be confused by that, okay? so. I'm gonna stick with this, the more expensive one. Click on select. And then in here, there's literally just two options. So get the most memory. And then I went with the two terabyte option and uh, add to cart pretty much. And then definitely add Apple Care. That's a must. So let's see what we're looking at. We're looking at 2809. So now let me show you how to download the right version of DaVinci Resolve. The first thing you want to do is just type in black magic design support and uh, you're going to get this link right here. Click on it and now select DaVinci Resolve and Fusion software. So this is the confusing part. Okay, you don't want to get this, the one that has multiple versions right here. You want to keep going down until you see the Mac only version and it will tell you in the description support for max running Apple M1 processors. So that is the key. Uh, go ahead, click on it, whichever version you're downloading, free or paid. And then once it's downloaded, go ahead, install it. Now to get the raw footage, I can just go in here and type in Ursa 12K raw footage sample download. That's the keyword. And then look for Blackmagic's website, not anything else. So just click right here. And now if we can scroll down, we'll see these clips. And I'm just gonna go ahead and download the first one. Once it's finished downloading, the crazy part is check this out. So we know it's 12K and we know it's raw. I'm gonna make it full screen and hit play. Look at this. It's not skipping a single frame. It's playing back in real time. This is kind of mind blowing. Now let's fire up DaVinci Resolve and see what we got going on. I'm just gonna go into this project and uh, let's locate our clip, downloads, this is our shot, let's bring it in. And if I click on this guy and hit inspector, let's do this. Let me just right click on it and say create timeline. And now if I hover over to my edit page, if I click on my clip and hit metadata, it tells us that this is 12K, okay? That's the resolution for 12K clip. That is very different than our timeline resolution. But if I were to double click on this, we're in our canvas window. And if I hit play, you can see it right here. It's playing it back in real time. It's not skipping any frames. This little green dot tells us that. And now if I pause, I click on my timeline, now we're down here. And if I click on my timeline, something interesting happens. Now look at the resolution. It's 1920 by 1080, that's default compared to the actual clip resolution. So now a 12K clip in a 1920 by 1080 timeline 
Let's see how that plays out. It's playing back in real time. But things will be a little different when we make a few changes. Before I do that, I'm going to go under my inspector, click on this guy's scaling, and just do fill so it fills up the frame. Now let's go ahead and click on our project settings. See the timeline resolution? If I click on this, right, and go down, change it to 4K UHD and hit save. Now look at this. So the resolution of the timeline changed to 4K, a 12K clip in a 4K timeline container. Now let's hit our playback and see what happens. So you start to see that it's it struggled for a second, but still playing back just fine. Now that is going to drastically change when we go back in here and change it to 8K. So now we're in 8K. If I hit save, it's going to readjust again. Now we have a 12K footage in an 8K container. Basically, if I hit play, now look at this. So now it's struggling, okay? So realistically, it can't handle 8K or anything above that timeline uh, resolution. It can handle the clips in 12K inside a timeline that is 4K. I think up to 4K could be a sweet spot. Now let's go ahead, grade our footage a little and see how it responds to that. First thing I'm going to do here is obviously buy us some room because 13 inch screen is like really pushing it. So I'm going to move this over so we can see our node tree clearly and all that. I'm going to go ahead, click on this so we have some sort of scopes happening here so we can see the adjustments and the changes that we're making. And then we're going to click on this raw clip since it's raw. And just to prove our point, we're not going to start off with the Rec. 709 conversion. We're going to start off with a blank canvas and see how it handles everything. So I'm going to Go ahead, build a few nodes. Let me move over here. Start off with my contrast. I'm going to go ahead and crank it up a little bit. Not too much, something like that. Let's pick a hero frame too so we can make proper adjustments. So let's keep them somewhere around here. So I mean, obviously, already it's looking pretty good just with a quick little change that took place right here. Now I'm going to go back here and let's lift up our gamma, just bring them out a little bit keep our gain down, something like that. All right, so this node, we're going to use it as our HDR. And obviously, I'm trying out different tools to like really put this to test and see how much it can handle. So I'm going to hit Shift H so we can see what we're affecting. I'm going to go under my zones. And uh, let's go ahead and for our highlights, let's select all of that. And I'm going to come out. I'm going to grab my exposure for the highlights and I'm going to start raising it crank it up so to give it like some juice and it pops our image up and that's the beauty of the HDR palette right like I mean it's just so granular and then for our shadows let me see what's happening in our shadows so if I look at our shadows shadows are looking good let's look at our darks darks is not picking up anything so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go back in my zones in my dark and I'm going to start moving it around until we start to pick up something. Now, I don't want to pick up a lot. Like something like that. Shift H again. And now I'm going to go back into my wheels in my darks. And like now let's try to pull it down a little bit to like really give it some contrast. Pull it down more. And now if I do before and after, I'm getting some good colors going. And then in here, I'm going to go back into my primaries, give it a little bit of saturation. Even something like that. So it brings out more colors and just gives it that pop. And now let's go in this node and drop in some OFX and see how it handles it. So I'm going to throw in a glow effect. So that's over the top. Let's go and click on soft light. Let's pull this back. Let's also pull this back. So we got this image right now. Uh, what we want to do is, no, that's not doing it. So I will keep it somewhere around here. And then let's go under global blend and let's blend it out. So let's keep it somewhere around here, bring the brightness down a little bit and let's raise it up. So it's just giving us something. 
So mind you, I'm looking at a tiny portion of the screen on my 13 inch and I'm grading it and I feel like the colors are looking pretty freaking good. Now let's do a playback and see how it's handling it. So it's a 4K timeline with one OFX HDR palette and a couple of other adjustments going on. So it's gonna get to tell us right here. 12K raw footage in a 4K timeline playing back at 10 frames. What happens if I turn my glow off? Let's try it again. Okay, so now it's playing it close to real time, okay? If I turn it on, it drops it to half. All right, let's throw on some grain and see what happens. Now, if I throw on some grain, let's go back in here, let's select 16 reversal. Let's buy some room and now I'm gonna go back all the way and play it back again. So we dropped four frames from 10 frames that we had after applying the glow effect. So now we're down to between five to six frames. And if I, again, turn these two off, we're gonna be totally fine. We're gonna be playing it back in near real time. Let's look at some practical solutions in a situation like this. First thing that I would recommend you do is go in here, drop the resolution down to 1080p, okay? Let's see what happens now. Boom, all of a sudden from five frames, we're up to 15 frames, okay? Another thing, noise reduction and grain, usually keep them off until the very last step, which is export. Anytime you're grading your footage, if you have a noise reduction here, if you have a grain here, keep those off. Let's see what happens now. Boom, we're back to real time playback. This is how I would go about it. Let me know if there's any specific content that you would like to see in regards with the M1 chip MacBook Pro. On that note, do not forget to check out the link to the training. It's down below. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you guys in the next video.